Thank you to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for inviting me to speak here today. The Institute is a monument to building bridges across cultures in an effort to advance understanding between them. In a world with as much cross-cultural tension as ours, this effort could not be more important. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States have enjoyed close military, political, and cultural ties for many years. And while my role as its ambassador to the United States, especially during these challenging times, requires special attention to the military and political aspects of my job, I have taken great pride out of being a cultural envoy for Bahrain. Throughout my experiences as a businesswoman, a human rights activist, a member of parliament, and now as an ambassador, I have always endeavored to use my unique background to enhance cooperation and understanding between nations and cultures. Unlike the previous ambassador, I'm not a career diplomat, I'm a political appointee, so I've only been doing this for four and a half years. Uh, for many years, Bahrain was held up as a model for how intercultural dialogue and collaboration could contribute to building an effective state and an effective government. My family's history in Bahrain is a living testament to this truth. My family left Iraq in the late 1800s, seeking the universal immigrant ideal, religious and economic freedom. We found success in a society where one's religion offered no barrier to it. My family's history is not unique. You can find many similar examples among Bahrain's sizable Christian, Hindu, or Baha'i community as well. Bahrain has built its prosperity over the centuries on incorporating the aspirations of people of diverse backgrounds into a multicultural society. And although we have faced a number of challenges to our, special co to our social cohesion over the past two years, I still believe in the power of cultural diplomacy to resolve differences. Cultural diplomacy has always been important to building a better relationship between the United States and the Islamic world. At no time was the importance of cultural diplomacy more evident than in the wake of the horrific September 11 terrorist attacks. In the wake of that terrible day, it became very clear that much work remained to be done to build cultural bonds on both sides of the ocean. Although a variety of factors have at times made the task more difficult, the United States' investment in cultural diplomacy has made mean meaningful contributions to American foreign policy in the Middle East in a way that the use of force could not. The deployment of cultural ambassadors to the Muslim world has exposed a new generation to the music, film, art, and literature of the United States. Furthermore, the investment the United States has made in developing cultural and educational exchange programs has helped to lessen the influence of radicals who demonize America for their own political benefit. And although it is clear that there is much more work to be done on this front, the success we have seen thus far has been encouraging. Cultural diplomacy has always been instrumental in the development of the Bahraini-American relationship. The history of Bahraini-American cultural diplomacy can be traced back to the 1890s when American missionaries arrived in Bahrain and established a small medical clinic that would become the American Mission Hospital in Bahrain and founded the first church in the Arabian Gulf. In the years since then, these efforts have only intensified. Much of this can be traced to the establishment of a US naval base in Bahrain in 1948. And since then, a variety of American restaurants and other cultural institutions have sprung up across Bahrain. On one street, which is next to the naval base, you can see every single American a fast food chain available there, some that are not even in Washington, D.C. So you'll have Dairy Queen, you'll have um, a McDonald's, you're going to have a um, Hardee's, everything that you can think of, Starbucks, Costa, everything is there. Um, the naval base also serves a platform from which cultural diplomacy can be conducted. Frequently, American artists and musicians visit Bahrain to give per for performances to, for American military personnel. These artists also perform for Bahraini audiences. American musicians also regularly appear in large cultural festivals, such as the Spring of Culture, and this takes place in Bahrain in the month of March, and draws crowds of tens of thousands of Bahrainis and also from around the Gulf countries. The US Embassy in Manama is also actively engaged in effective cultural diplomacy. The highlight of these efforts is America Week, which has become a yearly festival that highlights American culture and brings Americans and Bahrainis from all walks of life together for events and performances. Improving the United States relationship with the Islamic world through cl cultural dis uh, diplomacy is not merely a one-way dialogue. Indeed, building cultural bridges between Bahrain and the United States is one of the most important roles as an, uh, my, my most important roles as an ambassador. In this spirit, I frequently host receptions and events at the embassy that feature Bahraini cuisine, music, art, and religion. During the month of Ramadan each year, the embassy hosts a traditional iftar dinner 
each week that is open to people of all faiths. We use these, these events as a, as a way to expose Americans to Bahrain's rich religious tradition and to build bonds of friendship in the Washington, D.C. community. These events are also important opportunities to highlight Bahrain's history as a bastion of religious pluralism in the Middle East. The embassy also opens its doors during citywide festivals and sends diplomats to cultural conferences to help tell Bahrain's story. Although cultural diplomacy has been effective at building bridges between the United States and the Islamic world, it is important that both sides take care to respect how such efforts are perceived. Over the past several years, we have seen a number of high-profile incidents that have stoked tension and heightened misunderstanding. In working to prevent these types of crises in the future, it is incumbent on political leaders and cultural ambassadors to maintain a robust two-way dialogue that is culturally sensitive while also permitting exploration of differences. Incidents like these, while painful for all involved, are ultimately opportunities for both the United States and the Islamic world to better understand one another and to grow from the experience. I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to discuss the ongoing challenges facing Bahrain and to explore the ways in which cultural diplomacy can aid in my country's ongoing process of political and social reconciliation. Following the accession of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa in 1999, Bahrain has undergone a rapid program of political and social reform. The results of this process have been impressive. In a little over, over a decade, Bahrain has established a bicameral legislature, held three parliamentary elections, experienced rapid economic growth, and enjoyed freedom of expression protections theretofore unknown in our part of the world. Bahrain was also a model for positive and constructive relations between Sunnis and Shias, as well as Christians and Jews. The benefits we provide our citizens, including free education and healthcare, do not discriminate on the basis of religion, sect, or national identity. On February 14, 2011, a number of Bahrainis took to the streets to demand great, greater employment opportunities and better access to affordable housing. These demonstrations began peacefully, and the legitimate concerns of the demonstrators were national rather than sectarian in nature. Unfortunately, a small group of extremists hijacked these demonstrations to advance a, di a divisive sectarian agenda. The demonstrations strained social cohesion, imperiled uh, law and order, and brought Bahrain to the brink of civil war. In responding to these events, the government made many mistakes that contributed in their own way to the polarized environment which we f in which we find ourselves. In seeking to heal these divisions, the government of Bahrain has taken a number of important steps to shed light on abuses, to implement meaningful reforms, and to pursue a meaningful, inclusive dialogue that will ultimately lead to the resolution of our political differences. As someone who owes a tolerant, multicultural, non-sectarian Bahrain a great deal for my personal and professional success, it has been very painful to watch how sectarian strain has brought Bahrain to where it is today. Although we face many challenges as a nation, I sincerely believe that the inclusive and comprehensive dialogue between all of Bahraini's people can make a substantive, con substantive contribution to nation healing and reconciliation. The government's commitment to dialogue cannot be questioned. His Royal Highness Crown Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa reached out to the opposition at the height of the unrest and extended an unprecedented offer for dialogue and reform. The opposition's rejection of this initiative has had a profoundly negative impact on Bahraini society and has contributed to a general mistrust and suspicion. It is imperative that we break this impasse. In early December, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, renewed his call for dialogue in a keynote address at the 2012 Manama Dialogue. Although there has been a great deal of posturing in recent months by the opposition, I have been heartened by the response to this latest initiative, an inclusive dialogue that takes into account the aspirations and desires of all Bahrainis is the only way to resolve our differences. Although any dialogue must be driven and led by Bahrainis, we, we find great value in assessing how cultural diplomacy has helped to resolve dis disagreements around the world. In a world as uncertain as ours, learning to better understand diverse cultures is not a luxury, it is a necessity. I would like to thank the Institute for this opportunity to speak with you today and to share my thoughts on this important topic. And I would like also to, for whoever is here in Washington, D.C., you have an open invitation to the Ramadan iftars. This year, Ramadan will be July and August, and usually it's every Thursday night at the embassy around 8.30, 9 o'clock. So I look thank forward to seeing you. Thank you very much for your thank presentation, you. and welcome to Washington, D.C.